Have you heard the big buzz surrounding the release of the Super Mario Bros. movie? And no, we're not talking about the phenomenon that is Jack Black's amazing singing skills. <laughs> we're talking about the epic clash unfolding between the impassioned Mario devotees and the discerning critics. Yikes! Just look at these ratings. There hasn't been such a big divide between fans and critics since Star Wars The Last Jedi. So what's happening? Why do critics and fans have such different opinions about the Mario movie? In this video, we'll look at both the fans and critics, the good and the bad, and we'll figure out if either side is off the mark, or totally spot on. Spoiler alert, critics actually do have some valid oh. points. The main criticism from film critics is regarding the plot. The critics' consensus on Rotten Tomatoes says, while it's nowhere near as thrilling as turtle tipping your way to 128 lives, the Super Mario Bros. movie is a colorful, albeit thinly plotted animated adventure that has about as many Nintendos as Nintendons. Claudia Puig from Film Week says, They forgot to create an engaging story. It was bland, uninteresting, and cobbled together. Dylan Roth from The Observer said, It is the laziest possible version of a Mario movie. Many other critics call the movie boring. Lacking a detailed plot, they wanted more. The movie was emotionally bland, wasn't ambitious enough, was too childish, and yeah, you get the idea. It seems like the critics were expecting something more profound and remarkable. They might be heavily focusing on the artistic merit and technical aspects for this movie. Filmmaking connoisseurs know all about plot structure and character development. They've probably seen the three-act structure so many times they have nightmares about it. They know all about the hero's journey and other formulas that show us how to structure a story. If you know these formulas like the back of your hand, then they make these movies feel repetitive and boring. This is probably why critics love rule-breaking films so much. Which is completely valid. Their job is to criticize movies. And we agree, there were some elements of the Mario movie that weren't perfect. Was the plot structure kinda plain? Yeah. Was the pacing too fast? <laughs> Absolutely. Sure, 80s music is fun, but did they really have to use the three songs that appear in almost every other movie? So yeah, there are definitely elements that could have needed more time in the Nintendo kitchen. But what would have happened if the scriptwriters had made a more complex storyline? What if the characters had been more deep and complicated? We believe the movie would have suffered as well. The Super Mario Bros. movie was never meant to be an out-of-this-world experience. There were no high-stakes quests, bone-chilling evil villains, or complex stories with hidden meanings and symbolism. The Mario universe has never been about that. In fact, most Mario games have a simple plot and heavily focus more on the gamer's experience. And it appears that some critics seem to have forgotten that this is a video game movie. If you haven't played a Mario game before, then you wouldn't understand most of the references. Which is another valid point critics have. Many of them are concerned about the movie's accessibility for those unfamiliar with the Mario franchise. Huh? The movie was overwhelming with how many Easter eggs it had. But if you don't understand any of them, then the movie will just be overstimulating and confusing. The nostalgic feeling will not hit its target, leaving those watchers unsatisfied. Sadly, there's not much illumination or any other studio could do about that. Not every movie is for everyone, and you can't please every single viewer. Oh, and one last critic review. Odie Henderson from the Boston Globe called it a checklist of fan expectations. We're still trying to figure out how that's a bad thing. <laughs> but hey, we might be biased. <laughs> nah, that's ridiculous. <laughs> right? Fans had a completely different perspective of the film. The overall consensus was that they loved it. For many fans, the movie was an event movie. The kind of movie you dress up as your favorite character or wear a cool t-shirt. Oh, we want in it! Well, we want Luigi! Wow. And show up at the premiere because you want to be the first person to watch it. Video game movie adaptations do not have a great track record. So when the movie was first announced, many fans were hesitant for various reasons. The casting. First, of course, is... What would the story be about? 
And what if they ruin the movie by not being faithful to the source material? Meow. However, as time moved forward, the hype started to build. The trailers came and went, and fans started to get excited about the movie. By the time premiere night came, many of the fans had abandoned their initial hesitations and dove headfirst into the excitement of the movie. And while it's all well and good to be excited about a film adaptation of your favorite game, it may have led to some blind love. What we mean by this is that many fans were kind of biased even before they saw the movie. Look at some reviews left by fans on Rotten Tomatoes. Chris T said, Fun filled enjoyment, loved every second, very nostalgic indeed. Monica said, It was great, all hidden stuff in the background and just like the game. Autobot B said, If you're a fan of Mario, you will love this movie. Old or young, everyone can enjoy it. So, as you can see, there were some specific aspects of the movie that resonated with the fans. Nostalgia and references to the games. The movie was great in regard to the fan service. This movie was created for a very specific audience. It was made for people who already loved the video games, as sort of a homage to the franchise and us fans immediately caught up on that. We see references to the very first Nintendo games, Winks and Jumpman, Foreman Spike, Pauline, and more. The world building also showed a lot of gaming references. At the very beginning of the movie, we see Mario and Luigi rushing to meet a new client, and they go through a New York City construction that resembles the platforming layout of level 1-1 in Super Mario Bros. And more facts like this can be found in our playlist of facts from the movie. We see towns like Toasterana, Wild Yoshi's running around, and we even get Mario Kart customization with start and A buttons, as if they're using a controller. Fans spent the whole movie noticing and pointing out all of these references and Easter eggs. And if the visuals weren't enough, the music was another gift for the audience. There are over 100 music references with new arrangements to the classic songs, to specific game and level sounds. The movie's magical soundtrack made the whole experience even better. So yeah, many fans felt like the movie was made for them, and this may have blinded their opinions and stopped them from being a little more objective. When the time came to leave a movie review, fans were surprised to see how badly critics had rated the movie. This created some outrage among the audience because they had very different opinions. Like Reese said, Don't believe what Rotten Tomato viewers say about this soon-to-be legendary movie. Really brings out the good old Super Mario Bros. video game nostalgia, and it's endlessly entertaining. So sure, was the plot of the movie predictable? Absolutely. Did the audience care? Not at all. At the end of the day, the fans felt like Nintendo truly understood their audience and delivered. Plus, now everyone has Jack Black's voice singing Peaches stuck in our head. And us fans wouldn't have it any other way. I'm on the and hey, if you're also constantly singing Peaches like us, consider subscribing. <coughs> Movies are one of the biggest forms of entertainment. The film industry helps break down the monotony we face day in and day out. Movies show us a reality that's so different from our own, and they allow us to be a part of the adventure, if so, for only a limited time. Especially animated movies are easy to perceive, and they attract even bigger audiences. Animation is attractive to both kids and adults, and it can help connect people throughout the world in ways that live-action films cannot. The magic of cinema is that there's something for everyone. There are deep controversial, highly complex, and structured movies, and then there are simpler, feel-good movies that are just pure entertainment. There's nothing wrong with either of those, and both deserve their own space. The fun factor is often overlooked. Some people would say that animated movies are too childish, but that's not always a bad thing. Playfulness, comedy, and simplicity have their own value. Not every movie is made to be transcendental and complex. Some movies are meant to be fun and offer entertainment without any ulterior motive. Unless you've studied filmmaking, most moviegoers prioritize the fun factor over the critical analysis of a movie. They want to have a good time, and the Mario movie offers exactly that. It's whimsical and magical and just plain fun. You'll definitely get a few laughs while watching, 
it'll make you smile, and it doesn't have to be more than that. Making video game adaptations is hard. Just look at all these failed attempts. Video games and movies are extremely different, and mixing them together brings lots of struggles. Both of them have different story structures. The characters don't develop in the same way. The plot and pacing are different, and many other elements as well. Unfortunately, adaptations hold very unfair expectations, because they won't meet said expectations. If we stick to the game's storyline, then it will seem superficial and boring. And if we try to change it and make it more epic, then fans will be unsatisfied because it will be too different from the game they played and loved. These are only some of the challenges that Nintendo will face if they decide to make more movie adaptations. But Shigeru Miyamoto seems to have it all figured out. By the way, have you seen our video about Miyamoto's cinematic plan? If you haven't, you should totally check it out. And regardless of what the critics say, it's actually possible to make a good movie while being simple and straightforward. It doesn't make it less valuable. The Mario movie wasn't perfect, and it had flaws, but it also had some really amazing qualities. The art was stunning. The score and soundtrack were amazing, and it has some very nice themes. Think about it. The movie is about two brothers who don't want to be a failure and never know when to give up. In a video game, that makes sense, because if you give up, then you won't complete the level, and you won't be able to move to the next level. The movie showcases persistence, hard work, learning, problem solving, and other qualities in the characters. Characters that pretty much represent a gamer. It doesn't have to be more meaningful than that. While critics make some good points, they should also acknowledge the success the film already has. The film has placed the bar really high for upcoming animated movies, adaptations or not. And it did what it originally set out to do, be a love letter to Super Mario fans. And that should be enough. To recap what we've talked about today, the movie received very mixed reactions between fans and critics. The critics believe it was boring, childish, and lacked an interesting plot. The fans loved the movie and its faithful adaptation, and appreciated all the easter eggs and hidden secrets that were included. Both have some valid points, and we can't say either of them is wrong. At the end of the day, everyone will have a different experience. All you can do is simply watch the movie and form your own opinion, taking into consideration everything presented here. And remember, all opinions are valid. So, did you watch the movie? And if so, did you love it, or were you disappointed? Tell us in the comments below. And if you don't subscribe, we'll keep Miyamoto captive and make him never release the sequel. Bye bye. Bye bye.